All right, guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're finally getting around to covering this. Uh, the, this Atlantic article talking about how Disney mismanaged Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Sounds very familiar. It, it does. It does. It's almost as if, it's almost as if people have been saying this for years. Mm -hmm. But if you said that, that Disney has mismanaged Star Wars and you showed lots of evidence to support it, you were called an alt-right Yahtzee, you were called Fandom Menace, you were called a troll, uh, they built lists, they literally built they literally lists, did. hit lists of websites and YouTube channels that were being labeled as, as alt-right. So does that mean The Atlantic? is alt right now well, it's funny to me because it's not even just this it's in comics it's in things if you were bringing up about even about different things you know that are current day issues involving people being sick and things like that if you said certain things you were in trouble for it and now all these these journals and blog stuff these blogs are starting to say the exact same damn thing and now it's okay because they said it eric larson from image comics who has has gone back and forth with comics gate people on twitter for years refuting them right came out like a couple weeks ago saying hey yeah there are some threats from the top at marvel and dc that, that they basically just have to churn out as much shit as they can because they're they're living on the edge everything that youtubers have been saying yeah now, but it's okay say, when they say it and, and that's what we're talking about it's as long as a vetted media outlet is saying it it's truthy. If if a YouTuber, a, a random YouTube shout man, as they call them, shout woman. Yeah, don't be uh, so sexist. You people call them shout men. If we say it, if we point out the obvious, we're we're the bad guys. You know, speaking of that, you ever notice that it's really funny because when people were talking about things like Shira or whatever and our takes on it, they always go on about it. and that guy on Clownfish TV, and they always they always step over me like I don't exist because if, if you have a woman there, you have to yeah that changes the narrative. I wouldn't talk about Shira at all if you were on that. channel. And just yeah. like in general, like the He-Man thing, any of it. Oh yeah, it's like yeah. they all act like, well, that guy over there, and it's like, but they always step over me because you know it's okay when they marginalize. <sighs> yeah, right. Uh, so this is look, guys. Th to me, the mainstream media has lost because they they have to agree with what's been said for years, but they're coming in late. Mm -hmm. Just like always, but they know that there's no other choice. You have to admit, you can't ignore the facts. Star Wars is damaged goods. The comic book industry is in the shitter. And, you know, you're out of excuses. You're out of excuses. Well, I, think, so, I think corporations are starting to turn their back on Twitter, which yeah. is, I think they have, if they want to keep in with the, you know, in the good graces of these companies, they're going to have to go with whatever narrative that the corporations want spun at the time. I'm sure Star Wars doesn't want the spun, but you know what I mean. Yeah, now there's all kinds of like, you know, back channel stuff. People are speculating about why this article got written, you know, drama with Kathleen Kennedy and all that. We're not going to talk. I really didn't know any of that stuff. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. I don't pay attention. I, I can't verify. <laughs> I, actually, I'll tell you the truth. I don't pay much attention to what's going on in Star Wars now because I am to the point where I don't give a shit uh, anymore. I, I watched the circus with a bag of peanuts and some popcorn, but the reality is, is, Star Wars as a brand to me personally is is basically dead. It's, oh, it's over. we just wait for stuff to happen, like in Disney and Star Wars, and then we're like, yep, there it is. Told there it you. is. There it is. Said so, that was going to happen. There it is. So we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 202,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. God, this is uh, both vindicating and infuriating. And we have had many cases like this. Again, we've been doing this for like four years now. <laughs> you always get this person, because you're always wrong. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so this, wrong. This was me. This was me writing this article like a year and a half ago. And I basically brought up a lot of the things that they're bringing up in this Atlantic article. And you, you've you written some articles on it, too. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we got put on a list by some idiot on Medium, uh, Raylo or something. Oh, the, the Medium you can wipe your ass with, let's be yeah. honest. I mean, it's always just these extremists people want to write articles for attention. I don't even pay attention to anything they say over there. Supported all of all of this with facts, with numbers, with, uh, you know, I, I pointed to mainstream media outlets saying basically the same thing. I just kind of put it all in one place and said, look, um, you know, Star Wars is not in a good place right now. And it was, as soon as you saw the Atlantic article, you're like, 
Because you literally had Yeah, this. don't say. Yeah, a year and a half ahead of this. Yeah, so there is a lot. This is a very long, I think they get paid by the word over here at The Atlantic. But The Atlantic, just so you know, uh, The Atlantic is the publication that Todd Nahisi Coates used to work for. Mm -hmm. uh, they are a pretty far left publication. Mm -hmm. If they had written something like this three years ago, they would have been called alt-right Yahtzees. Mm -hmm. They would have been called out by Twitter. But now it's undeniable. Star Wars is broken. Like, Disney broke Star Wars. They're, and then when they get something back and they start getting goodwill again, they find a way to break that, too. Yeah. It said, right now... Broke back Tauntaun. Broke back Tauntaun. That's what people want. That's what Twitter wants. That's what wants. Him broke back Tauntaun. Anyway, go ahead. I, sm I thought they smelled bad on the outside. Anyway. Uh, right now, Star Wars is at a turning point. Lucas's original vision famously inspired an area of big-budget blockbusters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, eventually... They ran out of new ideas and came to rely on sequels and spinoffs. Inevitably, Star Wars itself uh, succumbed to the fate of the spinoffs of Star Wars. After releasing a divisive trio of prequels around the turn of the millennium in 2012, Lucas sold his franchise to Disney, Hollywood's chief recycler of old stories. Oh, that was so fun. Because it's true? How many live action reboots we have to have of every damn thing they own? Fresh Star Wars films began to roll out in 2015. Uh, though early acclaim and profits were impressive, creative troubles began to hurt the bottom okay, line. I wouldn't say that the f that they were very fresh in 2015. It was basically a new hope all over again. Yeah. I'm sorry, but The Force Awakens is a new hope all over again. In 2019, dismayed reviews and relatively soft ticket sales greeted the rise of Skywalker, the finale of a trilogy set 30 years after the first films around that time. Disney CEO Bob Iger announced a movie-making hiatus. He did. He said that there was brand fatigue and they weren't going to do a lot with it. And that's because they were going to do more Star Wars stories films. And now they pulled the plug on all those and that they were going to they were going to rethink it. And they weren't going to put so much out for Star Wars because they felt that there was a lot of fatigue around the brand. Had Lucas's galaxy lost its power or had its new stewards simply mismanaged it? So they're basically saying that, well, everybody's like, yeah, it's just Star Wars brand fatigue. It's brand fatigue. That was the story we heard. It was brand fatigue. Then here comes The Mandalorian uh, by Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni, who mm -hmm. actually give a shit about Star Wars and the Luca Lucas method of storytelling. Right. And it feels like Star Wars. And uh, this is coming from The Atlantic, a far-left uh, media outlet. Um, they said that uh, uh, it was the best live-action Star Wars product to arrive since the early 80s. Millions of viewers cooed over the short uh, statured enigma known as Baby Yoda. Grogu. <laughs> Grogu. Um, yeah, they said uh, to watch the show and then look back at the sweep of Star Wars history is to understand where that feeling comes from and why most of Hollywood's hero-driven special effects-laden fancies never attain it. Oh, my God. Well, they've spent, Disney has spent the last couple of years, or Lucasfilm has spent the last couple of years trying to destroy a hero, trying to destroy yeah, Luke. Luke Skywalker. And, um, you know, that is, that's what's cool to do. Like, say, let's just take your childhood toys and break them. And then when you cry about it, we're going to make fun of you for crying. See, to me, I just don't understand. I don't know why you if you wanted to make new characters and new things. So, first of all, you should have had an organic handoff that put the, oh, the original cast back together, which you didn't do. But... You know, there's no reason to destroy or belittle the past to, you know, elevate the present. You don't need to do that. And that yeah. that's what they did. I think if they hadn't done that, um, they had given a, the, the, the rightful, you know, uh, reunion with the characters you loved, had a, a send off and had the characters in the new the new show, like everybody thought Finn was going to be as important as Ray. If they had given people the proper the way they spun it, and if they give them good stories, and they give them stories about you know them as a unit and their fam, them as a family taking on things together without belittling things from the past, it might have done better. Yeah, I think people were kind of hoping for that. I'm hoping with with Ghostbusters that they kind of go that route. You I'm know? so worried about Ghostbusters. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm I'm totally worried about that one. <sighs> I don't know. I, I, mean, I want to be pleasantly surprised. I'm not in a place where I have zero expectation because then I can be pleasantly surprised. The problem about that is when you have zero expectation, even something that's, that's half-assed is better than what you expected, so you still think it's good. Yeah, I mean, it's gotten to a point now where I can't even really get upset anymore. Like, I'm not even... I, I'm, I'm disheartened by the state of Star Wars, but I can't even get angry about it anymore because at this point, I'm just like, the Star Wars I grew up with 
it, it exists in that place and time. And and Disney Star Wars to me is apocrypha, and I don't acknowledge it as being hey, actual Star Wars. Look, Hollywood does such a great job job of subverting expectation that people just don't have any anymore. Yeah, because and, or, or they have negative, you know, opinion going in because, like I said, and then at that point, anything that's even quasi half-assed, okay, you're gonna think, oh my god, thank the Lord. Well, that's like with the, all the the race bending and the gender swapping and all this stuff. It was like it was shocking in 2013, 2014, and everybody would do it for shock effect. Oh, now it's expected. Now like, they oh, just expect of course it. You did. Yawn. Here we go. Here we go again. You know, is, is the show gonna be any good? But it's interesting. They're they're talking about the inconsistent logic of Disney's sequel. Well, I mean, there wasn't an overall story plot that people kept saying since the beginning, and they got called all kinds of names for saying it. Yeah. So I mean, look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into it too much. I mean, there's a lot to unpack in this, but it is interesting that now they're allowed to say it. They're allowed to come out and say Star Wars is broken. Star Wars is literally mismanaged I just what the fuck yeah I know what the fuck and we, took, we take so much so much crap over what we say and people go around smearing us right and left and then to have some of the people that are you know the ones that go around smearing people like us write articles like this is just like I mean not necessarily this, this author but I'm right. just saying like the, the, the publication or the people that they usually pander to it's just like what the flip well Again, we've been saying it's it's who is saying it, not what is being said. And as long as a, a, a trusted media source is saying something unbelievable, like UFOs, you know, like. <laughs> well, the good news is that it, maybe they'll listen to them and do something about it. Who the hell knows? Uh, who the hell knows? So what we're gonna watch? Maybe maybe there's a changing of the guard coming because uh, they're changing of the diaper. Changing of the diaper. Anyway, we're gonna wrap this up. Yep. All right. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.